In this segment, I want to show you something, for a lack of a better term, I like to call an electronic stethoscope. It's a very simple, easy to put together device that allows you to hear inside of electronic devices. Now, um, before we even begin, I have to explain the principles and fundamentals of electromagnetism. I'm sure watching the show you have a clear understanding of what magnetism actually is, but do you understand electromagnetism? Well, if you don't, I'll try to, I'll try to give a quick uh, what the fuck. Electromagnetism is created when you pass electricity through a circuit, a chip, or a wire. It's a magnetic field that is created by the flow of electrons through that, that metal conductor. Now, this electromagnetic field flows from all electronic devices when powered on. Now, being an electromagnetic field, it travels through the air like a radio wave. Now, you can actually take a, um, a coil of wire. That coil of wire, much like an antenna, will pick up that electromagnetic wave and then it'll turn back into minute amounts of voltage. Using a small general purpose amplifier, you can turn that audio, uh, that um, magnetic field, back into audio. Now, if we all can remember back to the earlier episodes of the show, this is my phone freaking amplifier. What this really is, is nothing more than a, co uh, a coil of wire, also known as a, a telephone pickup coil, a coil of wire, and then an audio amplifier with a speaker. So what this is doing is, a speaker works under the fundamentals of, of electromagnetism. By passing voltage through a coil of wire, it creates an electromagnetic field, which then moves a diaphragm, which is just usually a piece of mylar plastic, um, that, uh, that moves, that moves the, the diaphragm, creating sound waves. Now, if all electronic devices have some kind of magnetic field, then you should be able to use a pickup coil to uh, pick up the ambient electronic signature of all electronic devices if they're working. And this is where the electronic stethoscope comes in. This is nothing more than a basic audio amplifier with a built-in pickup coil. You can actually go and buy um, a telephone pickup coil and add it to your own home-built amplifier or purchased uh, amplifier. This is just a patch cable for my camera so you guys can listen. And I've got a couple of hard drives here. I'm going to grab the power cable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up some of the drive drives, and I'm going to show you. Here's, I'm a drive, hello, IBM, 20 gig, nothing too spectacular. And we're going to listen to the EMF of the drive, which normally we would not be able to hear. Okay. Some of us don't know that a hard drive consists of a hard drive motor, the motor's right here, which spins platters, and then a set of read arms that are either on this side or this side of the drive. Now, what you just heard was the hard drive spinning up to power. I'll place the, the, uh, the amplifier and the coil right over here in the corner where the read arms are, and, I'll, and you can hear the read arms powering up. And those are the sounds of a working, healthy hard drive. So right now, okay, the hard drive, to a lesser extent, works. Now there are chips and whatnot on the back that you can try to use a pickup coil to pick up all the, uh, the EMF coming off of them, but because motors and read arms have a lot of magnetic uh, EMF signature, it kind of drowns out the sounds of the chips, but I'll show you some chips and whatnot later. Here is a 80 gigabyte Mac store drive that I know is malfunctioning, and this is actually something Nick from Techcentric wanted to see. Um, you know what? I'll just show you. Now, normally you don't know there's anything wrong with this drive until you take your 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 pickup coil and your amplifier and you put it to the drive and listen to what happens. See, drive doesn't work. Where's that beep? Beep, bitch. See, I had absolutely no idea that hard drives could have beep error codes. This is the first time I've ever seen that. And for the longest time, I thought I was actually going crazier. I mean, the drive is beeping at me. But um, until I actually took the pickup coil to this thing, I didn't realize that the read arms and the, and the drive platter motor weren't powering up at all. Let's see if we can get a signature off the chips. Anything? No? Wait? 
hear that static? That static is data going across the chip. So we know that this drive is sick. Um, this main chip over here has absolutely no EMF signature. This chip could be malfunctioning. This chip over here, which uh, could be the firmware controller, I don't know, um, seems to be functioning. The drive arms are not powering up, and neither are the platters. Or, I'm sorry, the read arms. Here's a 200 gig um, Western Digital drive that has crashed heads. Now, there are ultra, like this drive that I just showed you, you'd have no idea that there was anything wrong. You'd have no idea, but now we know because we can hear the EMF. Let's power up this drive and see what's wrong with it. Those are the sounds of the actual read arm setting and resetting. That was the sound of the actual platter motor failing and then restarting. And that was the sound of the, one of the chips on there failing and my pocket PC complaining low battery. So there we go, there are just some basic hard drives before my pocket PC runs out of battery because I've had this off the charge for too long. Here's my pocket PC. Okay, I'm a pocket PC. Let's see what it sounds like. Those are just some of the basic sounds of some of the simple chips inside. I'm not going to get into the gory details of, you know, pocket PC sounds. But with a little bit of experience, you can actually go and diagnose your electronics and figure out what is or is not wrong. Like, here's the remote control to my house. You'd think, oh, it's a remote control. It doesn't do anything with radio. But you're wrong. It does emanate electromagnetic frequencies because it's an electronic circuit. It's got chips. It's got power. So... It's very faint. I'll turn the audio amp up a bit. There. Here's the actual activity LED on my... That is the sound of the LED data passing as electromagnetic f uh, free, uh, fields into the amplifier. Okay, let's get a little bit more complicated. Broken laptop, Toshiba Satellite Series. I have no idea what's wrong with it. Um, I was actually able to use the pickup coil to determine that it could be the CPU. All right, if you if you hear that over there, that's actually the power circuit and the front uh, uh, as going through the front side bus. Keeping in mind that right now this laptop is off. The laptop's off, yet it's still receiving power, but it won't turn on. There's nothing going through the RAM. The power inverter for the actual backlight's getting some kind of, some kind of noise. Yet the CPU is getting a very faint amount of EMF on it, which means the CPU is getting power, but not responding to any kind of, com uh, any kind of power on sequence. Here's an active, running, I'm working laptop. Let's hear some of the sounds coming from it. Oh, I gotta turn that down before I deafen you guys, huh? Telltale sound of a hard drive. That's a telltale sign of uh, some kind of CPU. Oh, that's my CPU core right there. That's the network card right there. Ah, there it is. That's, that's my network card controller. But you can actually hear the amount of noise that the CPU is actually blaring over the entire system. But there you go. All this thing is is just an amplifier and a pickup coil, and you can actually use it as an electronic stethoscope to peer, literally, listen inside of your electronics to hear the, ele the electricity and the electrons flowing through your components 
Different things give off different sounds and different frequencies, different pitches, but with a bit of experience, you can actually go inside and literally figure out what could be wrong with something without even having to take it apart.